Folks, I have something I'm really excited to bring to you today. I have been curious for a long time about high volt lipos. Um, it, a high volt lipo is a lipo battery whose internal chemistry has been changed to make it safe to charge to 4.35 volts per cell instead of 4.2 volts per cell. Now that's only 1.5 volts uh, per cell, but it actually amounts to a pretty substantial uh, potential increase in uh, energy in the pack, and specifically in watt hours of the pack. Now we're used to thinking about packs in terms of amp hours or milliamp hours, but amp hours is current, and current alone doesn't do work. If you watched uh, my, my video about my primer on, on watts equals volts times amps, you know I said that watts is what does work. So saying how many milliamp hours a battery can provide doesn't tell you how much work the battery is going to be able to do. If the battery can provide amps at higher volts, it will be doing more work. It will give you more power, more flight time potentially, and any number of other things. But all of that is very theoretical and very numbers based, and it doesn't tell us how the battery is actually going to perform in the field. So I've done some flight testing, and I've got some very interesting results that I'm very, I love data. I love it when data gives me unexpected results. And, uh, and this is one of those times. So I'm really excited to bring this to you. I should say before I go any further that Hobby King did provide the batteries and the charger for this test. They reached out to me some time ago asking if there was anything that I was interested in featuring on the channel. I've been planning to do this test for a while. So I jumped at the opportunity. Thanks to Hobby King for providing this stuff for this test. The first thing I did when I was getting ready to do this uh, test was I searched on the internet to read up on what other people were saying about these batteries. And I found this great thread on RC groups, as always, there's a thread on RC groups, right? New LIHV batteries, hype or reality. And if you're interested in these batteries, you definitely should go read this whole thread. There is some good data there and some good discussion and good conclusions. And one of the things I found on this thread was this chart. And this chart shows that charging a battery to 4.35 volts per cell gives you more charge than charging the battery to 4.2 volts per cell, right? Stands to reason that you'll get more charge out of the battery if you put more charge in. But this chart is the one that I think is really interesting and really got me thinking. This chart is comparing a standard LiPo to a high volt LiPo uh, over their discharge curve. And what this chart finds is that the advantage of the high volt LiPo goes away as you get towards the end of the pack. So at the, at the beginning of the pack, the high volt LiPo is much higher, but then as they continue to discharge down, they get closer and closer together. And by the way, in case it's not obvious, the high volt LiPo discharges to the same level as a standard LiPo. So whatever, 3.6 volts, 3.5 volts per cell. It, it has a higher top end, but the same bottom end. So it's not just that it has a higher volts, but the same uh, range, okay? And so this chart got me thinking that what I would expect is that the high volt battery would be like better off the line. You would have less voltage drop for like the first two laps of your race, but then towards the end of the race on laps like three to five, that it would not have a substantial advantage compared to a standard LiPo. And so I thought, well, I wonder if the high volt batteries are not going to be great for, for racing. And maybe they'd be better for something like a low amp draw camera platform that's sort of hovering a lot uh, where th that advantage in the first half of the flight will translate to a greatly increased flight time. Whereas uh, on a racing copter, you know, if you only have an advantage for the first couple laps, you know, well, your flights are so short already that that's not going to translate to much practically. And so I came up with some tests to try and, and test that. And let me show you what my results were. The first test I did was a line of sight hover and just ran the batteries out to the full 1800 milliamp hour capacity. I wanted to see what the voltage would be if I ran them to 1800 milliamp hours with relatively low current draw, so relatively little voltage sag. This is not intended to represent real flight conditions for most of us because most of us are going to be pushing the batteries harder than this, but I just thought it would make a good baseline to compare the two batteries' performance, you know, sort of at a at a, at a basic level. Now remember that watts do work. So the amount of power required to hover the copter 
is expressed in a certain amount of watts. So what we should see is that the higher voltage uh, battery is pulling fewer amps. And we kind of do see that. If you watch the numbers carefully over time, you'll also see that the milliamp hours on the regular LiPo begin to pull away from the milliamp hours on the high volt LiPo. The high volt LiPo is providing the same watts at lower amps because it's at a higher volt. And if we, I'll go ahead and just speed this up now because I don't want you to sit through eight minutes of it. I'll put the raw video up as well. Uh, but uh, you, you can see at the high speed sort of how this plays out. So here we are at the end of the pack for the Nanotech LiPo. It's pulled 1800 milliamp hours. It lasted 7 minutes and 26 seconds. The Bolt high voltage battery is still going. Uh, it's coming up on 1800 milliamp hours now, and it's going to last, I think, 744 is its final time. So uh, another 20 seconds out of 7 minutes, 8 minutes. And if you look at the finishing voltages, they're also very close. 14.4 versus 14.3, so they ended up basically at the same place. They, they both rebounded to about 15.0, 15.0 roughly, after, uh, after they were allowed to rest. And this test would seem to suggest that the conclusion that the high volt advantage disappears by the end of the pack is basically true. You got another 20 seconds of flight time, uh, you know, is that really worth it? Uh, but I did another test that I think is much more representative of real-world uh, scenarios. Let's take a look at that. For this test, I took a particular track that I like to fly around my property. Uh, I call it the NASCAR track, although you, it's all right turns, and I believe NASCAR is all left turns. But anyway, it's kind of a wide-open track that involves a lot of high-throttle maneuvering, and that I thought would really give these batteries a chance to show how they performed under load. And I've got them queued up left and right, and I'd like to let you just watch it a little bit, and then we'll talk about the results. All right, well, you can clearly see that the high volt battery is faster, but let me give that to you in a little bit more quantitative way. Woohoo, data! I love spreadsheets. So I went through the, the video of these labs and I extracted the lap times. And the other thing that I did was I found the point in the lap where the current draw was the greatest. And that's just as I start climbing to go over the top of the house. It's always somewhere in that climb out that it's the greatest. And I found the point where the current draw was the highest, and then I recorded the current draw, the volts, and then I calculated from that the watts at that point. Okay, so from that all, we get some interesting information. <clears throat> the average lap time for the bolts was 9.62 seconds. Average lap time for the nanotech was 10.27 seconds. Over the course of the video, the bolt pulled seven seconds ahead of the nanotech, which I think you'll agree is pretty substantial. And the bolt delivered on average 889 watts per lap, whereas the regular nanotech delivered only 812 watts per lap. So the bolt delivered more power. And by the way, it, you know, we can talk about amps and volts, right? That's all well and good. But at the end of the day, watts is what really matters. That's the power that the battery is making. Uh, so 
So amps without volts is meaningless. Watts really tells the story. Now, volts obviously matters because once volts gets below a certain point, you're also not going to get watts and you're going to damage your battery, right? But, but ultimately, watts shows that this battery made more power, okay? Uh, it, if we look at the volt curve, well, actually, let's actually look at the volt curve. I made a graph. So if we look at this graph, you can see the voltage is the dashed lines and the watts is the solid lines. And I think this graph really tells the tale. Uh, you can see that the high voltage battery made more power throughout its entire discharge curve, except for this very first point, which I think is, you know, as I enter the, uh, the first turn, I think there's a little bit of discrepancy. So I didn't throw that data point out, but I, I think that's probably a discrepancy. So the, the high voltage made more power through its entire discharge curve, and it was at higher volts through most of its discharge curve up until the end. And in fact, again, this may be a data anomaly, but at the very end, it actually was lower in volts than the standard battery, but it was still making more power. It was still putting out the juice that makes the copter fly fast. So this, uh, this really tells the tale, that this battery is definitely performing better in both volts and watts. Uh, it just is. And if we look at the lap times, you know, one criticism you might make of this method is that, you know, it's not repeatable like a bench test. It's, I'm not a perfect pilot. My lap times are not perfectly consistent. And in fact, they're not, right? There's pretty substantial variance as I try and go as fast as I can. But if you take a look, you'll see that the bolt, there's just no question that the bolt was faster. Like even if you take personal variance, I have a variance of perhaps three quarters of a second on this track, right? As low as about 10 seconds, as high as maybe 10.7 seconds, right? Uh, and a little, it's pretty close to the same for the regular battery, but the bolt, it's just higher, even if you take into account variance. There's just no question that I was faster on the bolt. There's no question. Okay, but wait, uh, the picture gets better. The bolt battery weighs 209 grams. The regular nanotech weighs 229 grams. So not only does the battery deliver more power, more amps, faster lap times, but it weighs 20 grams less as well. So what about cost, right? All this performance doesn't matter if it costs too much more, right? Well, it costs about a little less than three dollars more. Twenty-seven sixty for the standard battery, exact same specs for the high for the high voltage battery, about three dollars more. So it's very seldom in this industry and in life where you can do a product comparison like this, and you can almost without reservation recommend this product. But it it puts out more power. It weighs 20 grams less. It costs a completely negligible amount more. And I don't see why you shouldn't just start buying high volt batteries and not, not instead of the regular batteries f forever. Like, I just don't just start using, I'm going to just start buying the high volt batteries and that's it. They're not without downsides. <clears throat> One downside is if you have high volt batteries, and you have regular lipos and you accidentally mix them up you could get a fire right if you if you charge the standard uh lipo on a high volt setting uh, by accident you it will probably blow it up now you're used to that when dealing with 2s and 3s and 4s right you don't mix those up and if you parallel charge you're very careful not to plug them in at the same time there's some protections though because your charger can detect whether you plugged in a 2s or a 3s or a 4s and it cannot mischarge the battery but with a high volt and a standard the the discharge curves overlap over almost the entire range and so your charger will not be able to tell that you plugged in a non-high volt when you go to charge it so you do have to be very careful not to charge a standard lipo on a high volt setting uh, or bad things will happen uh, but that's probably a risk that most of us who fly are capable of mitigating we're all used to dealing with the potential <laughs> flammable explosive batteries and not doing dumb things that burn our houses down, usually. 
Uh, if you do decide to go with the high volts, you will need a charger to charge them, and unfortunately your existing charger may not do it. This really is going to stink for you if you already have a high, like a, an expensive charger, a high output charger, your charging system is all set up, you know, 600 watts, 1000 watts, and if you decide to switch over to high volts, you're also going to need to get a new charger. If you're very, very lucky, your manufacturer may give you updated firmware or you may be able to change a software setting to make that happen but a lot of people are not going to have that as an option. If you do decide to go with a charger, the, the budget option I would recommend is the AccuCell 680 watt. If you combine that with a parallel charge board, you can get a lot of charging done. Not very fast, but it'll get the job done. And uh, it's the old standby, and it's not too expensive at, at around 30 bucks. A more expensive higher end option is the Mega 1344 watt balance charger discharge. This is the largest charger I could find that still has a high volt setting, runs $128. You will, of course, need a pretty beefy power supply to go with it, but uh, that's a subject for another video. If you already have a charger, you may be able to get some advantage of the high volts out of it. The reactor chargers actually will charge a LiPo up to 4.30 volts, which is not quite 4.35 volts per cell, by the way. It's not quite 4.35, but it's, it's better than nothing. Another thing you can do is you can intentionally miscalibrate your charger if your charger has a calibration function so that it reads a volt and a half low. Now, if you do that, man, make sure you mark it. Because again, if some poor person charges a standard LiPo on it, it's gonna, it's gonna pop and bad things will happen. But those are options for you. Uh, I will say there's one more thing that I, I have a tiny bit of reservation about, and that is we don't know I don't know, or maybe somebody knows, about the overall lifetime of these packs. Like, they, do, they seem to deliver very good performance, but I'm, you know, I've got three or four charge cycles through them, and it's possible that this change in the chemistry that they've made uh, to give you the high, volt, the high volt capability safely may affect the lifetime of the batteries. Now, these high C-rate batteries don't have a huge lifetime to begin with, right? Uh, if you get... If you get 200 charge cycles out of them, I think you're doing pretty well. And some people who are pretty hard on their batteries might only get 50 charge cycles. So I'm not trying to say that there's anything there, but I am saying that it's sort of an unknown. And Hobby King says on their website where they sell the batteries that because the batteries run cooler, uh, that they actually last longer. Well, maybe that's true, or maybe that's something a marketing guy said. I would like to see some data before I say that. But, but right now, it seems like there are so many factors in, in, in favor of these batteries. The charts really, once I, once I extracted that data and saw those charts, I just was like, well, crap, I'm just buying high volt from now on. And that's not, I really didn't expect that going into this test. Uh, usually the test results are, well, it's a good, a little bad, make up your own mind. And I just got to tell you, that, that, that that's just it. For three dollars more and twenty grams less, I don't know why you wouldn't buy this battery or or another high volt battery from another vendor if you don't like Turnigy for any reason. Just yeah, and then and then this, just you know, more power, go faster. It's ten percent more expensive. Go for it. All right. Well, I I hope that was as interesting to you as it was to me. Uh, this is a really fun test for me to do. I had a great time doing it. And I'm going to keep flying these batteries, and I'm going to uh, buy more of them. So there you go. Bye-bye.